I've always wanted to hear a pair of Totem speakers. Totem was a brand that I used to see in hi-fi shops when I was younger, and it was a brand that was always priced a little higher than what I could afford. I mean, in my 20s, I just always assumed that Totem was like marketed towards finance professionals and ballers. But now I got a pair in. These are the Totem Loon speakers. They are a compact two-way bookshelf speaker. Now the reps for Totem told me that these are kind of their do-it-all speaker. They're designed and engineered to sound great wherever you place them, whether it's on either side of your desk near field, in a proper hi-fi setup, shoved into a bookshelf, they're going to sound good. And that's because they have great face coherence, they have a really nice detailed bass without sounding too exaggerated, and crucially, they have a great off-axis response. I believe it's up to like 45 degrees, so you can kind of move about and they can still sound great. So this all had me really curious, like are these truly like the do-it-all speaker? Do they really sound good wherever you place them? And Curiously, I got these speakers delivered at the same time I got the Monitor Audio Bronze 50 speaker delivered. And I was fresh off reviewing that, the Q Acoustics 5010, so I was kind of all in on compact bookshelf speakers. So I got to compare them all and kind of take notes. Totem makes speakers that look like traditional hi-fi speakers. They don't try to make them look future forward or space age or something else. They are very much that traditional heritage vibe. These speakers are available in satin white, black walnut, and black ash. My speakers arrived in the black walnut, which is essentially a walnut cabinet with black drivers. And oddly enough, it totally matches my media unit. So like against that dark gray wall, I mean, it's all matchy match. And it's like the first time I have speakers that totally complement my media stand. The Loon is a ported two-way design. It features a one inch laser etch textile soft dome tweeter, a five and three quarter inch woofer. Nominal impedance is eight ohms. Sensitivity is 87 dB. Crossover frequency is 2.5 kilohertz. Frequency response is 51 hertz to 26 kilohertz. Recommended amplifier power is 20 to 110 watts. It measures 10 and 3 quarter inches high, 6 inches wide, and 8 inches deep. And it weighs about 8 and a half pounds. And they retail for $12.99 US. Now the matching grills are just magnetic and they're black and they're rather plain. And I like the way these speakers look so I just left the grills off most of the time. Recommended placement is 6 inches to 3 feet off the wall and about 3 feet to 8 feet apart. And I did just that. I put them about 8 inches off the wall and about 8 feet apart on either side of my media stand. This is the second time I'm doing this recording. The first time I did this review, truth be told, I didn't have high praise for the speaker. And that's because I totally messed it up. I thought the week or so that I had these burning in was enough and that's incorrect. They take an ungodly amount of time to burn in. And once they do, they sound awesome. And my initial review that I recorded was just completely wrong. I thought they sounded flat and kind of dead and I didn't really like them. And now, once they've been run in properly, they sound spectacular. And I made sure that I am hearing what I'm hearing, where like sometimes you get a speaker in and then again, it doesn't really sound good, but then your ears sort of adjust to the sound and then just sound better. So I decided to make sure that these sounded good and that's by not giving them a fair shake. <laughs> like once I realized that, hey, these sounded good, what I did is I disconnected them all and then I connected my Monitor Audio Bronze 50 that I had in for review, and then I got used to the sound of that, and then I scaled up and I connected my B&W 606 S3, a larger speaker overall, connected a sub, and then just got used to that. Then I disconnected them all, and then I connected the loons again, just to hear, does this speaker truly sound good? And like with the Bronze 50, I used some of the same tracks. I used Elzai's reimagining of Memory Lane off that Elmatic tribute album. Um, also Maude Dukes from Frankendank, Pseudo Echo from Consequence, Astroplane from Caliber and St. Files, I Can't Wait for New Shoes, uh, Kenny Burke's, oh my god, what's that track called? Uh, Rising to the Top, um, 90% of Me Is You from Gwen McRae, The Lover Remix from Taylor Swift and that other guy, and um, The Beast from the Sicario soundtrack. 
So here's a crazy thing. That off-axis response that Totem touts, it's kind of for real. Like, I can sit anywhere on my couch. I can lie down, I could turn my head, I could close my eyes and just take in the music. It doesn't really matter where I am on my couch. The music still sounds great. If you're the type of person that doesn't really care about a sweet spot and all the other audiophile crap about like, you have to sit in one spot all the time to get perfect sound, and you just like dancing around your kitchen while music's playing, these are the speakers for you. Another benefit of this speaker is that they sound huge and they dig really low, which doesn't make any sense when you pick up this speaker. It's really small. Playing pseudo echo from Consequence, it's a drum and bass song. And so there's drums and there's ambience and then there's that bass. And it seemingly digs really low. And with the sub off, I was just treated to more like of the lower depth than I thought uh, I would get out of the speaker. And at times I had to just check my sub to see if it was firing because I was just like, what? How is this possible? Now, it's not heating subterranean depths, but like there's enough there to inform you that there's sub in the song and it sounded really good. Ditto for Astral Plane from St. Files and Caliber. The drums kick in, it's a nice big sound stage, and yeah, you can kind of feel that there's more there. And so if you didn't want a sub or for whatever reason, if your space didn't allow for one, you can get away with not having one and still really enjoy yourself. Where I found it to sound better though was with vocal music and acoustics. So like 90% of me is you from Gwen McRae, Rising to the Top from Kenny Burke, and Lover from Taylor Swift, the remix. They all just sounded really full. And because there was no sub bass to sort of worry about, you were just treated to like a nice big full sound and like everything sounded great. And particularly their vocals, just sounded awesome. One thing of note though, is as big as the sound is, the treble does seemingly kind of roll off up top, not to the detriment of the song, but in comparison to the Bronze 50 from Modern Audio, that one, the highs are a bit more defined and the treble is a bit more noticeable, particularly with hi-hats. And so if you like a more prominent treble, the Bronze 50 would be the way to go. But then if you, like a more even-handed full sound, I would go for like the Totem Loons. It, they sound more comparable to the Q Acoustics 5010s where that speaker, it does have a deeper cabinet overall. So there is a little more like, forgive me, oomph to the sound. Like there's a bit more there, but it's also a bit more of a focus sound. So like if you are kind of dancing around your kitchen, the sound will change quite a bit more depending on where you are in relation to the speakers versus the loons where like I can freely move about more and get sort of the same sound the further I go, if that makes sense. Now amplifier wise, I notice a big difference between the 30 watts in the Rotel A8 to the 80 watts in the CXA81 Mark II from Cambridge Audio. That extra 50 watts just led to more oomph, more body in the mids and the drum seemingly just had more presence and they seem to kick harder. And then moving from the 80 watts of that to the 150 watts in the EVO 150 from Cambridge Audio, not a big difference. The difference was, again, with tone controls, like being able to just bump those up by two notches with a subwoofer off, added just a bit more low end presence to these speakers and I just enjoyed it more. Now, as big and full as these speakers sound, the implementation of a subwoofer always helps a bookshelf speaker, whether you think it's going to or not. Even playing non-bass music, Kenny Burke's Rising to the Top, it sounds great with these speakers, but the minute you kick on that subwoofer, it's not like you're just greeted to a wall of bass. There's just more presence down low, and there's information there that is beneficial for a fuller sound overall. So regardless of how big and full I might say a speaker sounds, the inclusion of a subwoofer always helps, no matter what. As for speaker comparisons, I would say that the QQ65010 sounds more similar to the Totem Loons. They both have a slight roll off up top. They both have a nice full bodied sound. The difference between them is just the off axis response of the Loons. It's just so much bigger. And if you choose to, you can kind of like toe in the 5010s and have a bit more of a focused sound. 
The 5010 does have a deeper cabinet, which in theory should lend itself to having a bit of a deeper, bigger sound. But for whatever reason, in my room, the loons just sounded huge, so I can't really speak to that. If you do like a more prominent treble and you like hearing those hi-hats, I would say go check out the Bronze 50 from Monarch Audio. That's kind of mo the more exciting listen. If you like a nice build, a traditional look to your speakers, you like dancing around to your music, and you don't really care about sitting in a sweet spot to get the best out of your speakers, the Totem Looms might be for you. If you like this video, consider liking and subscribing. I could use some more subscribers. Cheers.